Now we haven't done this in a few months because the way that the last few months have gone, it's like, well, do I want to make Rob's day even worse? But like, here's this terrible movie I watched. <laughs> right, right now, our state seems to be okay. So. Oh yeah. So the bad news is back. Yeah. So this may this may change in winter though, but at least for now we should be able to do this. <laughs> now we've added a few things on here, so it's taken a few months to be like, well, we could add clips. <laughs> and also, you don't know what movie we're talking about, so that no. I can show you the trailer. No, I don't. And have you react off the trailer? It won't take you long mm -hmm. to figure out why I instantly chose this. With today's technology, we should be able to hear another person's thoughts. It would be better if we had a human. Henry's human enough for me. So wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Fucking dog <laughs> reaction. We're I... not even, that was, they didn't even wait till the end of the trailer. Like playing with fire yeah. had the decency uh -huh. to hold out for that dog reaction to near the end. I just, I just want to point out that I should have watched this trailer before I pulled the clips. I pulled that clip for later, not even thinking they launched their trailer with that joke. <laughs> Make way for the total package, brains, personality, and good looks. Things will never be the same. It works. How'd you get so smart, I mean? You smell as many butts as I have, you tend to pick up a few things. Anything is possible. Oh. <laughs> well, you, you said it, Lloyd. Right when they said the title, Lloyd just down there at the bottom. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, it was like a very audible cat. No. Yeah. So what's your opinion again of uh, dog uh, reaction shots? Um, it, it, the Doug has his own set of cliches yeah. that he hates. I do think the dog reaction shot might be my least favorite cliche ever in anything. I just, like, if I see that, I'm like, I know this movie's gonna blow. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever well, I see that in a trailer, just, <clears throat> like. I will say this, there was more dog reaction shots in Playing With Fire. In this, it really was just that part, because in the, in this movie, at least they the dog... They to lead with that. Oh, they... It tells you yeah. the sort of movie they want you to think this is going to be. It was in the first act Garbage. of the movie. And, <laughs> like, the rest of it is like, well, okay, a voice is going along with the dog, so it's... <laughs> I hate to say this wasn't about the this, dog reaction shot, Wasn't there a look the who's talking movie? I'm so glad you said that. Did this? Yes, Look Who's Talking Now. Because if Look Who's That's Talking... That's what I thought, because I was thinking, like, is this, like, some sequel to that? Like, Look Who's Talking... Why? <laughs> if Look Who's Talking and Look Who's Talking 2 are what women want and what men want, this is the Look Who's Talking Now <laughs> of, that, of that universe. Because both have to do with electricity <sighs> and then being able to read something else's thoughts. What the trailer doesn't show you, you're really going to like this. The kid in the movie, mm -hmm. the character's name is Oliver Reed. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And I had to rewind to be like, wait, is, is the kid's character's name Oliver Reed? Well, now I want there to be a movie where it's a drunken Oliver Reed voicing a dog. Does bad guy want a device where you could read a dog's mind so bad? Because this all starts out with a science fair. Oliver Reed is... <laughs> Oliver Reed goes to one of those high schools that really only teaches science, mm -hmm. and all of the students there are nerds, even the bullies. It's one of those mm -hmm. where, like, the bullies are also stereotypical nerds. Mm -hmm. They're just scarier than our main character, so they're able to pick on them a lot. So there's a science fair going on in which there's what seems like millions of dollars put into each one of these science projects. Even the failures are impressive. Check out, check it out. This is one of, like, the failure experiments at this science fair. Oh my god, this cat nailed it. When am I getting think like a cat? So, 
the, what the what Oliver Reed creates in the movie is you remember what Doc Brown was trying to create in mm -hmm. 1955 where he could read other people's thoughts. Yeah, that's what this kid creates, and he demonstrates it on stage at this science project where he gets one of the kids up there, puts the device on his head, and actually does read his thought. And the kid says, like, was I correct or something like that? And then the kid he was using mm -hmm. to demonstrate it looks in the audience and sees the bully staring at him going, mm-mm. So the kid, like, lies and says, no, you didn't read my thoughts. In any other universe, someone would have been like, all right, let's demonstrate this on somebody else. No, because of this science experiment gone wrong, he wants to test it out again at home. And the only way he knows how to do this is to test it on the dog. Mm -hmm. And it works via electricity, hacking into satellite software. <laughs> you know what, Ollie? You're gonna get every prize that's ever been given. <sighs> Maybe they'll give me a prize. Ollie, we're gonna get prizes. You taste like a genius. I just love how now Lloyd is left. He's so, gone. This is this is how <laughs> this is how bad this movie is. Lloyd's like, I'm out of here. Oh, he remembers being here yesterday, being the only one here yesterday when I was watching. This uh, by movie. the way, out of context, things you never want another human to say. Mm -hmm. You taste like a genius. <laughs> That's going to be my top. Dog That's going to be my top ten. Like out of context things that I don't want another human being to say. Well, there is all this stuff going on in the movie between, mm -hmm. really, there's like five or six plots in the film, between the kid has a crush on a girl he's going to school with, the dog has a crush on one of the other dogs, there's agents who are searching for who is hacked into their satellite software. So, of course, uh, pause for poop joke. Ah, uh, nothing like a good revenge poop. Hey, Ollie, they say revenge is best served cold, but I think soft and steaming is much better, don't you? <laughs> now, keep in mind, he can, at that point, he can hear the dog's thoughts, but in that sequence, he's really just choosing to ignore him. <laughs> you know, it's not even an effective poop joke. It's one like, of a few in the movie. Like, that one, when I think, at least, I'll say this, Playing With Fire went for broke. Yeah. Because that was the most, one of the most insane poop jokes I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, blow out through a hazmat suit all over the face. That was just, he just dropped a deuce on somebody's lawn. That's, I that's it. You didn't even see it. I'm just like, that's not even, this is hand-me-down poop jokes. I have another one later on, but even that doesn't match the one from, uh, from playing with fire. This is this is one of those movies that's a Chinese American co-production. Oh god. And there there's a lot of them where I mean usually more often than not you can tell, but China it, you can do better. <laughs> but in, in Fun some something of something useful. You know how in some of them it's like okay, you can tell because of uh, maybe there's a scene or two that's mm -hmm. taking place in China. Maybe there's a supporting actor who's a like A-list Chinese star or one of them. This is one of those where it's apparent throughout the whole movie, meaning the kid's best friend is a Chinese student in China named Zhao, who th he's frequently gaming with and doing multiplayer online and everything. The kid helps him hack into the satellite to get the dog. And if you didn't know that this kid is gaming from China at the beginning, he is playing the kid while literally standing on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> As you do when you go do touristy stuff. <laughs> oh, so is there a rest of a tour group there? Because I honestly thought for a second you were implying that it's just the kid alone. No, it's just the, the kid. Yeah. Just at the Great Wall of yeah, China? Yeah, he's at the Great Wall of there's China. No, there's like nobody else there. He's just like, doo -doo -doo there's a few the other wall. tourists there, but there, he's like playing with a drone and some parents. shit. We're, and, oh my God. <laughs> there are so many scenes with Zhao and the villain that feels like, is this like an Iron Man 3 situation where you see a copy of this movie from another country and there's this whole other subplot going on with this, this is, kid? This is <laughs> this is like Power Rangers where like you had the Japanese version with us and then it comes over here and we insert our own characters into it to make it make sense. Yeah, it, you'll have random scenes like with the, with the two agents who are hired to track down who got into their software 
to do weird science stuff with the dog, suddenly you'll have dialogue like this. You went to university in Beijing. Well, I'd spend almost a year in Shanghai learning the language first. You speak Chinese. Visit China. <laughs> That's Brian Callen, which means I hope to God this gets brought up uh, next time he's on Joe Rogan. <laughs> I don't even know at this stage in the game, we're in the beginning of July, if the Chinese are going to let us visit right now. <laughs> oh, I know we can't go to Europe. To purchase copies of, of Think Like a Dog. There, are, <laughs> Like I said, there's several plots going on here. There's that plot that's like something out of... Uh, collision course crocodile hunter and then there's the plot where Josh Dumel and Megan Fox are the parents who are getting separated so the dog it's then the dog's mission to get the parents back together by teaching them to think like a dog that's where the title comes from he says you need to teach the parents to think like a dog because dogs are always happy so really if mom and dad just Stay happy all the time. It's like the parent trip, but with poodles. <laughs> but with like the message from Wonder Park where it's like, look, just oh, be happy. Oh god. You're fine. Oh, I hated that movie. <laughs> oh. So stop no, no, there can't be more. Oh no, 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 there is, oh. because they're wanting to sell their house. <laughs> they're they're wanting to sell their house. So the dog has to sabotage the people who are coming in who are potential buyers for the house. How would you guess that the dog's gonna do this? You're pretty good at predicting these kind of movies when I describe them to you. Sab so they're prospective buyers coming to... And the dog's gonna sabotage them? Uh, either find a way to make the house seem haunted that would be the most ridiculous thing I could think of. Shit all over the place or destroy it before they come to inspect it. What is that smell? Oh. Mm. <laughs> <Chitted. laughs> so, I mean, you could argue a ghost farted, maybe. Yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. By the way, I, I was closer with the shitting everywhere. Like, by the way, 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> But it's, I think it's one of those instances where there's like maybe eight reviews of it. So. Brad, I think we're done. <laughs> Film criticism was a mistake. Yeah. If that can get 75%, I don't care if it's only eight critics. That means the majority of those eight, <laughs> unless they were paid, fine. maybe they were, maybe they were paid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Film criticism was Chinese a mistake. critics. Yeah. Love it. It's a wildly different cut over there. It's like Oscar bait over there. It's way more dramatic. No, the, the, so, the scenes we didn't get were directed by Ang Lee or something. <laughs> so going back to uh, that Raj from Big mm -hmm. Bang Theory is, is the villain. He's one of those villains that you don't know right away is the villain. They try to make that like a reveal later on where he's basically this Elon Musk uh, type tech figure. In it, and then halfway through, you find out that uh, he wants that he wants this invention that Oliver Reed has created, so he can read the minds of, uh, so he can read the minds of his competitors, know what his competitors okay. are thinking. Well, at least that makes sense now that that's. It's so it's not way. just dogs. This would work on. It would work on humans as well. Anyway, <laughs> but it has sense. Because at first, I literally thought, oh, this this guy is literally like, I need a device where I can understand dogs so that way I can rule the world. Because I wouldn't put it past this movie. <laughs> no, he just I wants really it would. to... But he's terrible at being like a bat... Because you would think like a, a shady businessman could devise some way to just kind of screw this kid out of his invention uh, through, I don't know, like shady lawyers or just manipulation. I couldn't stand... Raj on Big Bang Theory, but I like him in this. Because Girl. in this, I don't have very many clips of him from this, mm -hmm. but I equate him with like Christopher Walken in The Country Bears, where he's unnecessarily- He has no fucks to give, so therefore it's kind of funny. <laughs> he's unnecessarily intense in a lot of it. If this was a thriller- I Please tell me at some point he just says, I want that 
does. Yes, he does. And he does it straight. As if, if this were a thriller, he'd be playing it the same way. So instead of... Well, this is, this is like, like one of my favorite performances is Charlton Heston in, what was it? Alaska. I want that bear. He did like <laughs> he just screams to get this dog in this. And instead of going just like your usual shady mm -hmm. businessman way of getting this kid's invention, he has a limo pull up to just kidnap the kid and a dog and hold them at an airport hangar. Okay. So he can kidnap, threaten him. Dog escapes and gets the other... You see this in the trailer where he gets the other neighborhood dogs to chase the guy down. And then they free the kid. And the kid is then free to go to the, the school dance so he can meet up with his love interest. How I, about... Shouldn't you go to the cops first? Um, oh, no, if no. If you were abducted? No, because uh, he needs that first kiss at the dance. <laughs> He's only got so much time to get there. At this point, there's like 15 minutes dedicated to the dance. I thought we were done with Raj until I do have this clip where Raj just suddenly storms the dance to steal the dog. What are you doing? Get out! Get out! Henry! Henry! Super cool. You got nothing on me! Nothing! <laughs> <laughs> so you can kind of see in that clip right there, he's playing it intense. It looks like a young Steve Hofstetter that totally <laughs> did not punch that guy. That was, that kid was, like, that, that, that had to be about this far away. Mm -hmm. Like, that looked like a good foot and a half from his face. I have no words. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I will respect about this? The kid's shenanigans that he pulls throughout the whole movie, like hacking into this software and everything to get this dog to talk. Mm -hmm. Like... He actually does get in legal trouble at the end and has to spend a few months in house arrest. I'm like, you don't really see that that often in this kind of movie where he actually does get in trouble. <laughs> um, before you go into uh, what you would rate the description of this movie, I don't really have much context for the next clip other than to show you that here's a cliche that they brought back. You know, teach it to us so we can appreciate its meaning. <laughs> they brought it back! Love, love little, little Asian kid. So I later. wonder when this movie was made because the kid, the main kid in the movie is the is Andy in the Child's Play remake, but he looks way younger in this movie. And this movie just came out like a few weeks ago. <laughs> my, guess, my guess is this movie's been in the can for years. It's like <laughs> we need the proper time to just dump this when no one will care. And it's like, hey, we got COVID running around. So you can see why I picked this one to be the one to come back. It's like even though you didn't oh. see some of the other Talking Dog movies oh. with me. It feels like we did see all of it I together. I feel like I've seen this movie. Because I, of playing with fire. I, I feel like what this needed most of all was um, this need to come out like 10, this need to come out 15 years ago. Uh-huh. And have Frankie Muniz in it. <laughs> That's what this, <laughs> this is the type of movie that it feels like. <laughs> um, and, and Paul Giamatti. Is As the that. dog? I want that dog. <laughs> Where give, me, would... give me that dog. Give me that dog. Give it to me. Give it to me. Come on on. a scale of <laughs> 1 to 10, where does this rank in, like, day ruining? Uh, which is, it feels like it's, it's a different scale now than when we were doing this show pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's so much that has ruined my year now that it... it <laughs> Talking dog just... movie? All right. <laughs> it's such just a lame kids product. I got like I would give this a four out of ten playing with fires. It's like Excellent. this is just a very poor man's playing with fire. It um, is. Yeah, the, it, it's. I it's, can't even. I, I. I'm like. I am upset by it. Uh huh. Unnerved, even maybe a little disturbed, but not to such a spectacular. Degree. Like playing with fire is just on a whole other level. This. This yearns to be that yeah but just can't even muster the energy it would have made your bottom 10 list but not uh it would have been lower i think yeah not relishingly so like yeah. playing with fire yeah not, this would have been like 
just above Rise of Skywalker or something. I mean, this has been like that 8 through 10 area. <laughs> God, about as many plots as that movie. Well, one you can't thing. be as disappointed by this in Rise of Skywalker. I'm like, one is literally Star Wars. It's like, oh my God, how could you be this bad? And this is like, I mean, you could look at the trailer and go, okay. It like, does It does have a higher percentage on Rotten Tomatoes than uh, Rise of Skywalker. So I should have, ex you know, I should have expected more out of the you know fart sabotage movie. As it should be. <laughs> yeah. As it should be. <laughs> I can't, I can't argue with that. I think 75% is way too high, but I can't argue with that logic because I'm mm -hmm. like, this, this knows what it is. This isn't aiming to be anything high. Like, there was no. not 200 something million dollars spent on this. If there was, that was the greatest scheme ever. <laughs> like, I want to know where that money went. Like, this was a mob front movie. <laughs> it, went, it went to our villain's new private jet. It went to rent out that airport. Yeah, airplane. there you go. <laughs> All right. Take care. That was fun. Goodbye. See you next time. Oh, God, I hate you.